My name is Terry Shepard, and I will be your guide into the world of close quarter battle. Although the origin of close quarter battle goes back to sword fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, today it's used primarily to describe the techniques when small teams are confronting an enemy inside a building or within a compound. Stairwells, hallways, and rooms always pose dangerous and unknown variables. From basic muzzle awareness, weapons transitions, to silent team communication, all police and military units need to be as good as they can possibly be at close quarter battle. In today's episode, I'll introduce you to the three basic elements of CQB, surprise, speed, and violence of action, and show you how they're applied in close quarter battle situations. To better understand the nature of the three elements, surprise, speed, and violence of action, let's now have a closer look at each of them separately. Violence of action is just another way of saying act with overwhelming force. Gaining and maintaining physical and psychological momentum is of utmost importance for any CQB team. Correctly applied violence of action will eliminate or neutralize the enemy while keeping friendly casualties at a minimum. Complete domination of the battlefield is the aim. Surprise can be the best friend of a CQB team. It's achieved by acting in a way the enemy does not expect. To gain surprise, meaning to get as close to the enemy as possible without raising alarm or suspicion, is achieved by moving in a clandestine manner, either at night or with low noise or using concealment. Gaining and achieving the initiative is the aim. Once the attack begins, speed allows the CQB team to use the first few seconds gained by surprise to its own utmost advantage. Speed doesn't necessarily mean as fast as possible. Rather, it can be best described as a careful hurry and is best achieved through well-designed planning and tactics 